بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد. Continue on in the the last lecture of our series, uh, which we referred to the Sunnah of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. Then we established the companions of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم are the main jama' of the Muslimin, the main body of the believers, and they make up the asal and the foundation of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'. And the third part of our series is we will begin to speak about the Rafid the Shia and their creed. Those people who have a creed which is in direct opposition to Ahl Sunnah and, and the people of Islam. And in fact, their creed is so contradictory to the religion of Islam that it, it's more appropriate to, instead of calling them a sect, to just call them a whole different religion. And as we mentioned in the previous lecture, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us to be one community, working together in righteousness upholding Islamic monotheism. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah says, and hold to the rope of Allah and do not divide. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, and work together in piety and in God fearfulness. So we should work together in righteousness as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has also commanded us for a common purpose that all of humanity has the same purpose that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made as a divine purpose. He created us for the purpose of worshiping Him and Him alone. To raise up the kalimat of Allah, the, the tawheed, the Islamic monotheism. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ وَالْجِنُ وَالْإِنسِ يَعْبُدُونَ That I have not created mankind and the jinn except for the purpose of worshipping me. So this entails having a common creed that Allah has revealed and His Messenger وسلم, espoused in practice. And the companions ajma'in, they followed and believed and they helped preserve this creed and this beautiful religion of Islam. Unfortunately, there are groups, sects and creeds which seek to distance us from revelation and they cause division and enmity between the Muslims and call into doubt the very foundation of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah and moreover the creed of Islam, of Orthodox Islam. At the head of these groups and sects is the Shia Rafida, the Twelvers and other groups of Shia that hold the common creed. We will attempt to highlight some of the main points about the sect in order to be concise as it will require volumes to expose their deviation, their deception, the tribulations they have caused the Muslims throughout history and so forth. Amongst their deviant beliefs is that the Quran uh, is imperfect and incomplete and that the companions took out verses and tampered with revelation. This is a, f a terrible lie. How is it a people could believe that they're going to be successful and lie about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's beloved servants, the companions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. In <clears throat> so we will try to use some of their very sources. For example, ha uh, Hashim ibn Suleiman al-Bahrani al-Katkani states in his tafsir al-Burhan fi tafsir al-Quran page 36 so this is a tafsir a Shi'i tafsir which is well known and it's more of, of one of the more modern day uh, people of the Ithna Sharia Ratha the sect the Imamiya those people who believe in the 12 Imams and believe in their infallibility so he says in his uh, explanation, he says, Know that the truth, which there is no escaping from according to the many statements which have been related that are forthcoming, and other than them, is that the Qur'an which is in our hands has been changed after the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Moreover, those who compiled it after him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam left out many verses and words. So they believe that the Qur'an has been tampered with, and that the Qur'an is incomplete, and that it was the Sahaba who changed it and they are free from the evil of the tongue of these people in the book entitled Basair al-Darajat Basafar he said there is no one from the people who can say that he compiled the Quran as it was revealed except a liar and no one compiled it and memorized it like it was revealed except Ali ibn Abi Talib and the Imams after him وَعِيَاذٍ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلَكَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَرَى عَنْهُ and may Allah be pleased with Ali ibn Abi Talib anhu. So this is a filthy lie on Ali Abi, al, uh, about Ali ibn Abi Talib and the claim that their imams are infallible and that their imams actually memorized and knew and compiled the Quran 
better than the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, of course, with their exception of Ali ibn Abi Talib, these are uh, lies which we have no, uh, they have no evidence for these statements, but only in their fabricated books of tales and uh, fairy stories in which they have concocted in order to distort the people from the truth. So listen to some of their strange interpretations in their tafsirs. In Tafsir As-Safi as by uh, Fayyid Al-Kashani. Al al this is in the first volume, page 156. And this is the Tafsir, and also this was collected in the Tafsir Al-Burhan, the first volume, page 172. And they say, Jafar said, and he is known by, by Al-Baqir. He says, about the verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, In the law Allah Yagfiru and you should be here, Yagfiru Maduni Dalik and the Maya Shah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Verily Allah does not forgive those who ascribe partners with him, meaning shirk, but forgives what is other than that for whomsoever he pleases. This is the meaning in English of this this verse. This verse is referring to shirk and referring to uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not forgiving being not forgiving shirk. Especially if someone dies upon shirk, shirk al akbar that takes you out of the fold of Islam, Allah doesn't forgive that and they will be in the hellfire forever. This is what Ahl Sunnah understands and what is very apparent from the meaning of the verse. However, here's what they say in their tafsir. They say, which means, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Verily Allah does not forgive those who ascribe partners to, to him. They say, which means he does not forgive those who deny the leadership of Ali. Radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And then when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, but forgives what is other than that for whomsoever he pleases, they say, meaning those who support Ali. So those who support Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu are entitled to forgiveness and believe that he should be the imam and believe that he should be worshipped. Radiallahu ta'ala anhu and he is free from those evil, from this evil ideology. For those Rafidah and Twelvers, one of the most important issues of the religion, and in fact they make it a pillar of Islam, is imamship or leadership or walaya in their most famous book of creed they narrate on abu jafar that he said islam is built on five things prayer zakat hajj fasting and leadership and then zarara uh, Zara said i said which is the most important of those things he said leadership and this is in usul al kafi volume 2 page 18. al bahrani states According to what is narrated, that leadership, acceptance of the prophethood of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the leader of the imams, adherence to loving them, enmity to those who hate them and disagree with them, is a foundation of iman, with monotheism of the Almighty. The religion is not sound without all of that. And this was in Al Burhan, page 19. So this is a very strange belief, a belief that is built upon complete fabrications from people we have no idea who these narrators are and their trustworthiness and where they came up with this this uh, creed because in fact it contradicts the very foundation of Islam that we know Islam is built on five pillars and 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 to uh, and 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 this is in accordance with the Hadith of Jibreel that Islam is built based on five pillars that you bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah and that the Prophet was the last prophet and messenger and that you pay the zakat uh, that you fast five times daily prayer that you, you uh, pay zakat the alms tax that you fast the month of Ramadan and you make the sacred pilgrimage if you are able to do so. Those are the well-known pillars that are come from the Hadith of Jibreel and that are mentioned in the Quran. However, these people have their own agenda and these people have their own religion in fact. The Rafidah believe their Imams are infallible and that the whole of humanity and creation needs at least one Imam established on the earth. In Basaya Darajat, Abu Abdullah was asked, will the earth remain without an Imam? He said, if it was without an imam, it would melt. That's page 508. So meaning that if one of their imams is not planted on the earth, people like the Ayatollah Khomeini and, and other people, other individuals like this, if they're not around, then the earth would melt. This is in accordance with their heretical creed. And to show you and illustrate this even more, in their most respected book, which is entitled Al-Kafi, there is a chapter entitled, all I had to do was translate the title. The title of the chapter is entitled, The Imams Alayhim Salam, known, uh, Knowledge of the Past 
and future and that nothing escapes them. And this is in volume one, page 261. Again, they believe that their imams have knowledge of the past and knowledge of the future and that nothing escapes them. They have ilm al ghaib But even the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam doesn't know when the hour, as is witness in the hadith of Jibreel when he was asked about when is the hour to be established. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the questioner knows more, uh, that the, the, the person being asked knows nothing more than the questioner. Another deviant aspect of this creed is that they believe that Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu as being infallible. And some of their sects view him radiallahu ta'ala anhu as being a part of Allah or sharing in his lordship. Amongst the countless fabricated narrations they attribute to the companions to substantiate their creed are narrations such as what is found in Basayr al-Darajat. And we'll mention this in our next sitting. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad.